Hello, everyone. We are going to start the session in, in a couple of minutes. We are just waiting for all the attendees to uh, join the meeting. I see people joining now. Okay, we are good to start. So good evening, everyone. On behalf of Health for the World team, we would like to welcome you in our today's panel discussion on last minute tips for Iraq's application. As many of you are applying for radiology residency in this match or probably in the next match, uh, you'll be in the last stages of polishing your ERAS application now. And we are having this panel discussion with the newly matched uh, radiology residents so that they can share their experiences with you guys and advise on how to get along with it. Please feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A box. And uh, now I would like to hand over to our moderators, Clara and Sina. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so as was already stated, you're welcome to enter questions in the chat box. Um, you're welcome to also say where you're from and what year and training you are. And then our moderators may either get to your questions in the chat box or we'll answer that or ask them um, live a little later this evening. So getting into our panelists, we have five great panelists today, each from a different institution. We have Mujan Nikpana, who's a resident in radiology at the University of Birmingham at Alabama. Next, we have Melina Hosseini, a radiology resident at the University of California, San Diego. We have Akuvi Claude Adusu, a radiology resident at St. Vincent Hospital in Worcester, Massachusetts. Daniel Montes, a radiology resident who is going to be starting at the University of Colorado. And finally, Ozzy Baghdadi, an incoming radiology resident at the University of Maryland. So just to get started, we'll have each of the panelists provide a one or two minute introduction where you can provide any other information about yourself and your initial thoughts on the, your programs. Perhaps to go in order, if Mujan wouldn't mind getting us started. Sure, and I'll start. Hi, everyone. I'm Mujan Nikana. I'm a first year radiology resident at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Before starting radiology residency, I was a research fellow at NIH for a couple of years in the radiology department. And uh, last year, I did my internship in surgery department at Dartmouth Hitchcock. Uh, it's uh, great to have you here. And we all are very excited for you all for this application cycle. Hi, everyone. I'm Melina Lasseni. I'm a first year radiology resident uh, at the University of California, San Diego, in a clinician scientist pathway. Uh, before starting my residency, I was a research fellow at UCLA. Happy to be here, and we are all so excited for you guys. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So I'm Akuvi Claude Adoso. I'm currently doing my radiology residency at St. Vincent Hospital in Worcester. Uh, before that, I did my internship at Lincoln Hospital in New York. And right before that, um, I did an ultrasound training. Um, I was certified as an ultrasound tech before actually um, getting into radiology residency. So 
I'm happy to share some of my my whole adventure with you today. And I hope uh, whatever I could say or share with you uh, could also help you uh, during this application season and good luck. Is it my turn? Sorry, I lost con uh, connection for a while. Yeah, go ahead, Daniel. Okay, sounds good. So, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm from Colombia. Um, I used to work as a research fellow at, at Mass General Hospital for three years, and uh, now doing my internship here in Massachusetts as well. And uh, as uh, Clara said, I'll be going to uh, Colorado next year. So very excited about that. We're excited to be here with you guys and, and share a little bit of my experience so far. Hi everyone, my name is Ozzy. Um, I got my medical degree from Iran and then uh, got a master's in clinical research from UCSC. And then I also did two years of research fellowship at Johns Hopkins Hospital. Um, as Clara said, I'm going to University of Maryland um, next year. And I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Great, thank you all so much. Um, so just to get started with a very broad question, um, based on the title of this evening's session, we will all be uh, submitting applications in about a week here. And do any of you have particular last minute tips you'd like to share with the group? Um, so I guess just the general stuff, but, but what I think the most important thing is that just review your application, don't do it last minute and have someone else like your mentor review it for you. Um, don't just, um, just submit it, just have someone else review it for you. Um, I think that's the most important thing, which is like the last thing, but um, I think that's really important because I've seen people like make mistakes or make typos in their eras, which, is, um, which wouldn't look very good. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to say that I agree 1000% with that. Uh, I think that if you're on time, you're late already. So um, make sure to have a good, a good, a good amount of days before the actual day comes to, you know, share your application with your mentors, with other friends, uh, make sure that there are no, you know, grammatical horrors around. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think that for ERAs, what you really want to do is make it readable, uh, make it easy for whoever is going to be reading your application to, you know, have an easy time doing that. Some people use uh, bullet points. Uh, what I did was I did some like spacing and asterisks, depends on what you like, um, and try to keep it, you know, neat, try to keep the same format that make it easier for the reader. Uh, one tip that I do want to tell you is uh, try to make your hobby section, like try to optimize your hobby section. The, at the end of the day, that's really what's going to uh, separate you and distinguish you as a person. And you want to make sure that programs uh, get to feel who you are. So, um, and it's a good icebreaker overall. So what I did, I, I love astronomy. Uh, what I did, for example, was I, put, uh, you know, I love astronomy, put like a small statement about astronomy. And then I did like a question, like, is Pluto a planet, right? So people were obviously just like, how, jumping to ask about, you know, what was my take on that? And it's, you know, like a common thing that people like to discuss about, like, hey, why, why is Pluto no longer a planet, right? So, so yeah, that's going to be my advice. Yeah, I agree. And one more thing, I've seen so many people, um, not lying, but, but exaggerating about their hobbies. So just don't do it because you might end up interviewing with someone who's like a pro in that area and then it will look really bad. So it's better to like keep your hobbies limited than just lie and I don't make it look really good. Yeah, I totally agree. You would get specific questions about your 
hobbies and what you do and the details of it. And you want to be definitely very honest about it. And uh, to continue Daniel's point about uh, all your experiences, uh, I did myself uh, the bullet points. And I think that it was easier compared to having long sentences because uh, the people who are reviewing the applications are doing thousands of them uh, for uh, during the interview season application cycle. So uh, you want your application to be very organized and easy to go over. So I 100% agree with Wojan, Ozzy, and Daniel. I think you guys should read your application many times. No typos and try to put everything in a bullet points, very you know, organized, brief, and to the point. And do not repeat the same concept in different sections, like in research, work, the same thing. And about your hobbies, try to include maybe only one sentence about it because most of the people are going to ask you about your hobbies and you want to talk about it you know like confidently and it's always good to mention something in your application and do not forget to fill the volunteer part because it's really important in some programs they have extra not extra they have points for that you know they score every application and volunteership is part of it. So don't forget about that. Thank you, everyone. Um, I didn't have a chance to introduce myself. I am one of the moderator as well for tonight. Um, same as Daniel, I was in the uh, work as a research fellow at National for two years and uh, this year I am playing. So I was just starting my uh, questions about the interviews. So uh, we just discussed the um, about the before the interviews, like uh, how to submit the application. So next week, we're going to submit the application. And uh, since then, we will just wait for the email. So after we submit the application, how should we start preparing for the interviews? Um, so one thing that I could say would be uh, trying to practice as much as you can with anyone who can help out. It doesn't need to be someone who is in the medical field. If you cannot find someone who is in the medical field, try with anyone else you can find. I personally try with people who are not in the medical field, with people who were uh, my mentors. I've tried with friends who were in the medical field as well. And I had the chance to get different aspects of um, what they think about me introducing myself, uh, talking about my professional experiences. So I think anyone we can find, just practice. I'm not saying that you should memorize your answers and just uh, talk about them as a robot, but you need to be able to kind of overcome the pressure when you are interviewing. So practicing and practicing is what helped me uh, in my case. So uh, if I was to say something, I would say, try to practice as much as you can with whoever you can practice with. I agree. I actually, um, I've heard this from like people who interview um, people for residency, that the most important thing is that like, they can't tell if you practice or not. It, it would be so obvious. Um, and um, I want to add one more thing. I don't remember, but just practice. Um, and there are some like generic questions that like um, you you have to practice, and then there are some questions that um, are asked in maybe one interview, and you can improvise. Um, yeah, I think that's really important. For, that's the most important thing for interview. I think I'm going to say something that's like super cliche as well, but. Uh, one of the things about interview in, interviewing is, you know, like this uh, high, like searching for your higher self and just like knowing, like sitting down and thinking about what exactly is it that you want? Uh, what are your goals, right? And, uh, you know, searching for your higher self. So what I was doing, for example, I was taking the night previous to the interviews just to sitting around and thinking about, you know, what do I really want to do? Like, what makes me like a different person? You know, the, that sort of stuff can come up in the in the interview. Um, uh, you might have like behavioral questions and, and you want to know exactly like what's your position or like 
take or whatever. And uh, yeah, practicing questions. Uh, there are going to be questions. I think that's one of the, pre the next topics that we're going to uh, touch upon. Uh, you are going to for sure find a question that's going to be repeated uh, maybe in 80% of the interviews. So you want to have a good quite like a good answer uh, and sound natural. You don't want to just like press play and and and, and be a robot, right? All right. Uh, I, I want to add something, Sina. Yep. You know, this is a, another cliche, maybe, but I do really believe in it. I think uh, whatever you are talking about in your interview, be yourself. Because at the end of the day, you want to end up in a program that is a good match for you. And you don't want to say something and end up in a program that you are not going to be a great match, you know. So try to be yourself. And you're gonna find your program, I promise. Absolutely right. It was you actually sort of answer uh, sort of to some extent my next question, but I would um, ask the question in, um, in other ways. So I would move on to the next two questions. So is uh, what are the some important consideration to think about when assessing whether a program is right for you? What are the factors that I should look for during interviews? So you sort of answer that. I think one of the most important things is that what are your goals throughout residency? Um, are you want to do like do you want to do like a research focus um, residency, or you want to focus more on the clinical aspect of radiology? And uh, the other very important thing is that how much you match that program from the personality standpoint. And you can definitely get a very good sense of that during the pre-interview uh, session that you have with the residents, uh, even though it's virtual. And um, we, Melina and I were the, both were included in the first year that was actually virtual match and it was pretty stressful for everyone because everyone was concerned that we're not going to get a very good sense of the program because we're not traveling and being there but i would say even virtually you can definitely get a very good sense and understand how that program matches you how are the residents and how do you like it so definitely try to focus on that as well because you're going to be in that program for four, four or five years and you want to be comfortable, you want to be friends with those uh, residents and it's definitely a family and uh, you want to feel like you're at home. So definitely consider that as well. That is completely true. And I think that uh, one of the hard, hard part of being like in your position right now, like in this specific point is that you're just like doing like a shotgun approach. You're just like applying elsewhere, you know, like you're not thinking really about, you know, oh, what's the culture of the program and how can I, you know, how can I fit in or will I fit in? The truth is guys that uh, it is going to start unraveling as the season progresses. And you're going to feel this you're going to feel more connected to some programs uh, other than with with respect to others and uh that's a whole you know that's a whole uh discussion that we can have but uh some people rank based on feelings and some people rank based on you know i want to be uh i don't know whatever else or, or goals right uh but yeah it will it will happen uh but maybe right now you're not thinking about that Uh, so uh, something personal that I did um, for, to rank the programs, um, one was the lo location because I tried to first make sure the prelim programs I was ranking were not too far from where I would maybe match uh, for radiology. So that's something that you want to take in consideration as well if you have to move from uh, states to, I mean, states to, to different states. Um, the second thing was made also uh, how I felt during the interview season when I was um, interviewing with uh, the, the attendings, uh, the program director, and also discussing with other residents. Uh, if you are a foreign graduate, there's also 
the option of offering an H1 or a J1 visa. So you also want to pay attention to that because um, it's not the same thing later on. So you might, based on what is best for you, you might decide to apply more for those kind of program or rank the programs who offer an H1 compared to a J1. But um, everything depends on how you feel during the interview season. So apply as much as you can initially. I don't know, for me, it was mainly how much of money I had. So uh, apply as much as you can. The, I don't think there is a specific numbers of application that people need to send, or if there is like a secure number, a safe one, or something that can guarantee you more chances. I don't think there's any. Uh, so if some people tell you 100 or 120 or 20 or 40, I don't know. I just apply to how many I was able to afford, afford myself by that time. And that's what I would suggest uh, to do as well, as much as you can. But if you are a following graduate, you just know that you need to increase to make sure that your chances are as, 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 as high as possible. So you want to apply uh, broadly. So. Great, thank you everyone. I would move on to the next question, which is about applying type of the programs that uh, applicants are applying. So how should we know whether we would enjoy being at the program with the fellows or if we would prefer more resident focused experience programs? Personally, I'm not sure if I got your question right. You're asking if, um, like, how to tell if you want to be in a program with more, like, less fellows, as opposed to, like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So personally, I think it's a, it's very personal. But I wanted to be in a program that has, I don't know, less number of um, fellows, so residents could be the responsible um, physicians. Um, I didn't want to be like. Um, with fellows all the time and they would get the cases so that I, I i wanted that but some people wanna i want to be in a program that's um run by fellows uh so i think it's um it's very personal and i think it depends on the program as well because some programs even if they have fellows the fellows are playing it's kind of a teaching and training role for residents and they give the residents the opportunity to do the procedures and walk them through it or like go over the studies and they help them actually. So it depends on the program as well. And uh, you can definitely ask the residents about how much exposure they have to procedures and the studies and uh, what is their role compared to fellows when you do the um, pre-interview night, definitely ask the residents about it and how they feel about it. I agree with Mojan and Ozzy. I think it's kind of different for each person. Uh, I mean, maybe for someone like you prefer to be in a program, a uh, fellow based program, but you want to stay in your city with your family, you know, uh, sometimes you feel that in that community program has a better culture, people are more connected with me. So maybe you, you will prefer to go to the community one because you love the culture, you love the people, you know, it depends, it should be a balance, I think. And and I think that was what I was meaning when you have to do like this soul searching uh, thing or process, you have to really, really uh, get to know or really prioritize what's important for you. Like, and what's important for you may not be the same case for other people. So yeah, just, you know, uh, sleep on it, uh, uh, you know, discuss it with your pillow uh, and and and, you know, and uh, you'll, you'll get answers. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, everyone. Um, I have a couple of questions in the chat box. I will start with the first one. So how did you navigate applying and interviewing with preliminary programs? 
Um, did you just apply broadly? Did you have any specific approach for applying for uh, prelim programs? Um, I think for me, one important thing was the kind of visa that um, the program sponsored, because um, I mean, you have to look, if, if, that, if you're an IMG, you should definitely look into their website to see what kind of um, visa they um, sponsor. Um, and um, I personally applied very broadly because um, I, it was, I thought it's just one year and um, I just wanted an internship. But um, for me, one important thing was the visa. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So me personally, I didn't want to do surgery. Uh, so I didn't apply for any surgical program during my first year. I just felt like I couldn't do it. <laughs> it was risky. And then I felt at the end, like, oh, my God, what did I do? Maybe I should have applied for surgical program as well uh, for the first year. But I went with what I felt was right for me. So um, you might feel later on that it might not be the best choice where you don't get enough interviews because you know the thing is you are an IMG, you need or you should apply broadly, but for at the end, you will always go with what sweet to most for you. And I felt like surgery, I wouldn't want to do surgery at all. So that's why I decided to only apply for medicine and uh, for the transitional year. Um, and I ended up somewhere, <laughs> but it was quite scary um, doing that. So it depends on you, whatever is you think is best for you, but you should apply broadly. <laughs> I agree. I would say it all depends, like I did a surgery internship and I'm happy because in radiology we have procedures that I feel more comfortable after doing the surgery internship but many of the transitional year programs have ele like elective months that they can do in radiology and that's a good exposure before starting radiology residency as well so it all depends on you and how would you like to kind of customize your internship to get more ready for radiology as well I know that like we all think that it's just an internship year that doesn't matter, but it can actually be helpful for your radiology residency as well. Um, just to go back on that point uh, that Muzan just mentioned, um, that's correct. And um, one of the things that I also paid attention on was, uh, programs which were offering ultrasound, um, a lot of ultrasound either training or um, having procedures during the first year of, of internship because I felt like based on my background because I had already an ultrasound, I was trained as an ultrasound tech already, I wanted to go somewhere where the first year could also um, still offer that experience of me doing procedure with the ultrasound uh, often. So when I, at the end, when I had to rank the uh, the prelim program uh, where I interviewed, I did my rank list based on where I, I was going to have that experience that I wanted, still have the hands-on experience with ultrasound. So, at the end, I still think you should apply broadly, but then when it comes to ranking, that's where you narrow um, your choices based on how many interviews you had and also what fits the best for you. So. Thank you all. I, we have a couple more questions in the chat box. I would go over them by, one by one. So the next question is the, um, about the ERAS application, about the personal statement. So do you advise to keep it general for all the programs or should we modify it and add a few sentences um, about the specific programs? I think so you can I, have a preference. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. 
sorry. Uh, so I think if you have a preference for a particular program in terms of um, a particular city you want to be in with your family, um, definitely send a customized and particular uh, personal statement mentioning why you want to be there. I'm sure all programs would really like that because they want to make sure that you, you really want to uh, be in that program. Uh, but in terms of other programs that you don't have any particular preference, it's okay to send general ones. But um, for those programs that you really want to be there and they're among your top choices, definitely a personal statement. Yeah, I agree with Mujam. It's really important to submit a specific personal statement for the your number one program or at least for top three, I think. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I would do that as well. Uh, you can have, you know, uh, personalized uh, programs, your top five, top 10, I don't know. Uh, depends on how much time you have, honestly. Uh, and um, you can also, what I did was, uh, I had like, uh, like some preferred uh, academic programs that ended like sort of similar, some uh, preferred like uh, community programs that ended like sort of similar. Uh, and then the personalized ones. So, so yeah, definitely, I think uh, I think it's worth it. And uh, you can certainly highlight like why you like that program specifically. And if you're applying to um, a program that is not interested, for example, in research as much, talking a lot about your research experience and your personal statement, might not be as interesting for the programs that are focused on academic goals. So just have that in mind as well, because uh, you'll be asked questions about your personal statement during your interviews. And if it's mainly focused on, for example, your research experience, but the program is not as interested, uh, that might be something that you want to be considered. Great tips. Um, so we, as you know, this year, we, um, the signaling is a new thing that has been started. So there are a couple of questions about signaling. So the first question is that uh, any thoughts about whether we should try to discuss why we signal as uh, a place during an interview? Any suggestion for how to follow up if you do not get an interview at the place that you signaled? So I, I think that the reason why the whole signaling thing started is because applications are getting out of control, like straight up, just out of control. Uh, I think uh, if you if you guys, if any of you guys like Twitter, there's a really good account uh, from a, a pediatric nephrologist uh, from North Carolina, I believe. His name is uh, Ben Cardo Ben Cardomi Ben something like that. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, he, uh, he updated, he, he, he posted a chart, uh, that said like how many applications per position each specialty is getting radiology is something like 120 applications per position. So if there are 10 positions, then you can safely assume that that program is getting at least uh, 1200 applications. It is crazy. So it is a shame that uh, ERA's, ERA's response is just to put more pressure on the applicants and just like do more work to show like a preference on the on the on the um, on the yeah on the on the process. Uh, other than you know just putting like caps like application caps, but yeah. Nonetheless, that's going to happen. Uh, you have to play it smart. I don't think any of us here is going to have the experience to tell you what to do. Like, uh, it's a new thing, right? Like, uh, it's tough to predict what's going to happen. Uh, uh, regarding the second part, uh, there is always the possibility of you getting a, an interview on the second wave. So uh, there are uh, several parts, several, um, resources where you can like kind of be updated on how the waves uh, have, have been happening. 
the first one is going to be Discord. It's like a this uh, server in, in, in Discord where people are just like saying like, hey, I got an application here. And then everyone's gonna say like, yeah, me too, me too. So that when you can say that, okay, they released the first application uh, batch. Uh, the other ways there's usually like a, like an Excel type of thing where, where there's like people that do that and you can like kind of, uh, you know, be, knowing where the where the program is based on on the amount of, of interviews invites that they have left uh i would check that out if there if if it's a program that i really like uh i would re certainly check that out and and you know send an, an email to the program director to the program coordinator just you know the, there's nothing lost right like you're not going to lose anything just by trying um alternatively you can be like very annoying but <laughs> you know it's a, it's a risk that you're running but if if it's some some place that you really like then i think it's worth it to 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 you know to assume the risk i agree i think some programs actually save some spots for people that show interest um, so I think if you really want some program, one of for certain program, and you don't give an interview um, on the first batch, I think it's a good idea to just uh, show interest. And um, for me, my experience was that some programs have their particular policy, like they won't answer to your emails. So don't get disappointed if you send interest emails and you don't get any answer from the program director or program coordinator, because this is their policy and it doesn't show anything. Even if they have already read your email and they found out about your interest, they might not respond to you. Right. And, and, you know, getting a response and then not getting the invitation that also happens and it's like twice as disappointing. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very, um, um, ugly game. Uh, so, uh, the other thing that I was going to say is probably the best way to get, uh, opportunities through a mentor. Like if you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, then you might as well just use the resource. Uh, I think that goes uh, a longer way compared to, you know, you sending a cold email to to the coordinator. Right. Um, I have a couple of questions about the interview questions. So to what extent do interviewers expect you to have a clear sense of your fellowship and career, career plans? I, nobody asked me about if I had, if I knew what kind of fellowship I wanted to do. I don't think it's expected. Um, I'm not sure what others had doing the interviews, uh, but nobody, you are not expected to know unless you're like 100% sure and you want to show it. Because usually you go, you have like three, four choices in your mind. If anybody asks you, I would say it's better to, if you're 100% sure, then say what you're 100% sure of. If not, just say three, four choices you're thinking about. Uh, but I don't think you are expected to already know what kind of fellowship you want to do. You might have like a few choices in mind that you can share. Um, and if you share it, um, try to make something personal about it. Because I felt like doing my interview sessions, um, this kind of hurt me every time I was um, answering a question. I tried to make something personal about it. And I felt like for the few encounters I had, it made my interview kind of, go, it went a little bit smoother and I was feeling a little bit more comfortable because each one of the choices was just not, oh, okay, I'm answering this question just because of this, this and that. It was, oh, this, this or oh, that happened. No, I was saying something particular about it. And I'll, I'll give you one example. 
um, when they will ask me, for example, oh, introduce yourself. I will just start by my name, what my name means, um, where I come from. I always try to make something personal about what I'm sharing, just to, to make them re remember me. And I think that was important. Um, I wasn't trying to impress because I didn't feel like my application was that <laughs> impressing, but I felt like I could share something personal or make kind of a contact with people I was talking with. It, I was like, even if it I don't match this uh, during this season, I'm gonna make some contact with people and that can help later. So that's that was my approach. Uh, I might not be the best, but everything depends on how confident you feel about your application. Uh, so regarding the fellowship, to go back to the fellowship question, I don't think you are expected to know, but if ever the question comes in, just make it personal, related, put it with a relationship with something personal in your life so that they could remember that because they're not going to remember, okay, you want to do neuroradiology because of this, like a, uh, like a common answer that everyone has. No, say something personal about it that will make them say, oh, that is the reason why this person wants to do it because it has a relationship with the past of the person, the future or something that is that could be very personal to you. So that's just something I wanted to share. I think for, I, the, uh, go ahead. I got this question several times. I mean, if you know what you want to do, be confident and talk about it. But if you don't know, it's totally fine to say that I'm still exploring, I'm not sure about it, I'm looking forward to starting my residency like this. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think there's a good or wrong answer. Uh, Sometimes what I think it's, I mean, the only downside to saying, uh, to talk, the only downside that I see talking about a fellowship that I'm interested in is that maybe the program is going to be like, yeah, maybe he's going to slack in other areas or maybe he's not going to take the time to learn like the other areas of radiology. So you want to be cautious on that. If you're going to uh, express interest towards, you know, the specific area, just say like, I like this, but I understand that to be, I don't know, a well-rounded radiologist, I have to blah, 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 blah. So just to, you know, cover your basis there. Um, regarding the, um, what I, Claude was saying about, you know, sharing personal stuff, I highly recommend that. I think that the way for you to win like uh, 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 an interview is uh, making it less of a question answer type of interaction and more like a conversation, right? You want to make sure that, you know, it's a conversation. It's not like two people on Zoom, one asking and the other one responding, right? Uh, and, and yeah, that was what I was trying always. Uh, the best interviews was when I was laughing, you know, with the people or like just like, just like laid back, just having a conversation. Now, you know, obviously sometimes, um, you know, you're going to be nervous, you're going to be stressed and you cannot like fully express your personality in that's those situations. But if you can handle that and try to make it, you know, like a regular human interaction, <laughs> uh, that'd be obviously better. And if you have a particular interest in a specific fellowship, just try to study those programs that you're interviewing at the night before. Go over their website. If they are strong in that particular fellowship, it's always very nice. And the programs like it that you mentioned that, yeah, I like to do that. And the program will give me this opportunity to explore it more. And I'm sure that all the program directors and the people who are going to interview you will be like, okay, so this person knows that what opportunities we have and he or she can really grow using these opportunities. But definitely be very honest about it because you don't want to just talk about something that you actually don't want to do and you're just saying it during, during your interview because you're not you're gonna go there and um it's not like I, I'm really interested in body fellowship or no radiology and then you 
of course, everyone understands that your interests might change, but uh, definitely you want to be really honest about it as well. I have a, one more question about the interview questions. Um, so, especially in the virtual interviews, there might be like a couple of the interviewers and uh, in such a situation, do you guys suggest to ask the uh, repeat questions from interviewers or should we have a like a specific question for from a, um, different interviewers? I tried to make it personal for each interviewer, but it was stressful. And I, at one point I just gave up. So I remember that there was a program with which I interviewed. I asked the same questions every time. I just spoke as if no, I haven't asked the question and that I didn't, answer, I didn't know the answer because they were not in the previous interview, right? So they don't know what happened. They don't know what I said. They don't know the question I asked. And the only way for me to actually have something to say, because you are expected to have a question. There's no way you can go without asking questions. That's a no. You need to have one or two questions for each program. So if you cannot make it personal for each interviewer, just ask them the same questions about the program. You don't need to make it personal towards them. Just ask a general random, general question that you can ask for all interviews. Just keep that one to ask the same person at least. It helped me. And I think if you cannot make it personal for each one of them, because prior to the interview, they'll tell you, oh, there'll be maybe four or five interviewers. You don't know which one are gonna interview you, right? So you prepare your question. Okay, the first one, uh, I read on the website, that this attending has been doing this type of research or whatever. So I might ask one, two, three questions related to that. But during the interview, you might, when the interview starts, you might not have that, that attending. It might be someone else. So then you confuse, you don't remember what was the question you, was able, you were supposed to ask that attending. So I would just say, keep one or two questions that are the same for each one of them in case you forget the one you choose as a specific one. So. I, I want to say that interviewing is a very uh, nerve wracking situation. And you can certainly be in a position where you had, you know, a series of questions ready to be asked and you forget. That is, I think, normal. Uh, that being said, you do wanna you know, a review who are going to be your interviewers. Most of the programs are going to send the list ahead with uh, some time, just you know, take the previous night, you know, read about it, you know, read about the program, don't drop the ball. I mean, like you've worked so hard for this point, like there's like, it doesn't really make sense why you shouldn't read about the interviewers, you know, just like a basic uh, thing. And, and, and yeah, you should certainly have like, like, a, like a, a couple questions that you ask, you know, that can be, uh, you know, um, general, gener that you can generalize to everyone. Uh, one of the ones that I was using was um, maybe can you summarize the culture of the program in two words, three words, and that, that's a good, uh, I really like doing that because everyone's going to come up with different words, right? And you can talk about the, you know, why you chose this over that and you can, you know, and just expand on that conversation, right? Uh, the other thing that you can do if you find yourself like without questions is expand on whatever they were talking about. You know, just tangentialize, just, just like a tangential question to, to whatever you just spoke and, and you can continue the conversation. Great. Um, I'll chime in now with make sure we get some of these chat questions answered. Um, so somebody asked, 
did any of you dual apply, for example, to radiology and internal medicine, or perhaps to surgery or another field? Um, and they also asked if so, if you applied to the programs at the same hospital. And no is perfectly appropriate. So if not, we'll have to defer that question. Um, someone else so was, I, yeah, go ahead. I, I, yeah, I, I I did not apply to I did not uh, do like a dual apply. Uh, I do want to say that if you want to uh, apply to uh, IM, uh, remember that if you match into a preliminary position uh, or a categorical position, and you want to switch afterwards to radiology, there's no there's not going to be enough funding for you to make the switch. So just be knowledgeable about that. Uh, the only programs that provide five years of funding are the transitionals and surgery um, prelims or, or, or the other one, the category. So think about that. Great. And then another question that was asked that was in part answered before, but I'll see if anybody else has other, other thoughts was, does it make sense to apply to programs that weren't we didn't signal or that are outside of our geographical preferences 100 percent. i think i i personally applied broadly um i think it makes perfect sense to do that and i think sometimes even though that program is not in your favorite geographic area when you interview at the program you find out that you really like the people there and it actually matches your personality and everything so much that even you are ready to go to that program even if it's it wasn't in your preferred geographic area in the beginning so i would say definitely apply broadly and consider each interview as an opportunity to learn more about that program and what opportunity is going to give you. I agree. There were programs in small cities that I interviewed at that I, I ended up loving them uh, because the culture was really great. So I think um, really, as Mujal said, take the opportunity to just learn about the program. Um, you might end up loving them. Great. Um, another question that was asked was relating to the experience section in um, the application. And they were asking if it should just be a description of your role and responsibilities, or perhaps maybe adding a personal anecdotes, or what are your thoughts on that? perhaps rephrased um, uh, for a given experience, be it a volunteer experience or a work experience, um, would you guys recommend just putting in what our roles and responsibilities were, or would you put in maybe something that you um, learned in the long term or how you felt about the position? So, so yeah, I, I think that uh, in the experience section is uh, where you're going to use the most uh, the bullet points. Uh, you can certainly describe what you did, what were your roles, and what you mentioned as well. Uh, one of the things that I did was what did I take out of this experience? Like, why is this meaningful? Why is this part of my areas application versus other stuff that you know I decided not to put in, right? So I think it's a good thing, you know, to, you know, you know, inside, you know, why is this year? Great. Um, another question uh, pertains to the ranking um, and how you can rank prelim positions and how that is done in comparison to categorical radiology positions. Can you repeat the question, sorry? 
Um, I, I can, I can go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, so in my case, each program, each radiology program I was choosing, if it wasn't um, a categorical one, the uh, prelim ones would be based on the location. So I felt like uh, that was the important. If I was to march in a radiology program, I would prefer um, having the prelim program not far so that moving from one place to another one the following year would be easier for me. Um, so that was the, the way I matched my radiology programs, which were not categorical with the prelim ones. Great. Um, and then another chat question that was answered in part I saw by Daniel in the chat related to applying to high tier quote unquote programs um, if an applicant doesn't have as much research experience. Any additional thoughts on whether that is something that people should do or is it worth the, the cost I mean, of the application? So, so uh, high tier programs are obviously going to place more uh, emphasis on research. And uh, so if you have like very little research, the chances of you getting like a, an invitation is are very slim. But at the same time, I don't know, I feel I feel conflicted about this because this is the moment where you apply, right? Like this is your opportunity, right? So would $20 make a difference? Uh, I don't think so. But when you start adding the $20 of each applications, then it's going to end up, you know, <laughs> be worth, I don't know, a thousand dollars. Sorry about that. Bella. So uh, yeah, it's just a matter of, you know, cost benefit, um, uh, are you going to benefit because of the high tier application, even though you have very small chances? Maybe you might get an interview. Maybe you might end up in the place. Who knows? Benefit of the doubt, right? Um, so I think, um, in my opinion, definitely apply for the program that you love. If you love a program, you're going to apply, no matter what, I think. And I think research is part of your application even for the high tier programs, it's part of it. No one expects you to be a researcher because if they want to hire a researcher, they're gonna get, you know, researcher, you know, or they're gonna fill their academic positions. You know, they want resident with potential. You know, I think they want to be able to train you in a way to be an academic person. So don't get disappointed if you don't have that many papers, that many presentation, that many grants, you know, you just need to show in your interview, in your letter of interest, like in your application, that I want to be that person. I really have the interest, I have the passion, I have some what the potential and I'm looking for a place that can train me that can shape me I think this is that this is the important thing in my opinion I agree and I think it also depends on other parts of your application if you think you have a very strong application you should definitely apply um, even if you don't have any research experience that is very true yeah and, and programs, as, as, as Melina was saying, programs can also see that uh, potential in you. And if they get like this stellar applicant that is just starting and you know, potential to turn. We might be having a bit of a connection difficulty there. Um, I think we have a question um, in our list very similar to the previous question about the, having the experience of their research. Uh, so for applicants with having the background of the research and applying for programs that are not really, uh, that are not very, um, very uh, heavily based research. Um, so during the interviews, uh, should applicant still as part of their strength, they focus on the research or what are your suggestions in such a situation? 
I think it's best if you if you're interviewing with a program that doesn't have any research, it's best if you didn't bring up like don't talk about your research experience. Um, that's what I think. And you better find something that is interesting for you in that program, because if you have a strong research background and you're interviewing there, then you're going to be asked, why are you interested in this program? And you definitely want to have a really good answer. So look into the rotations they have, the clinical aspects of radiology, and like why their residents like their program and definitely go forward with that answer. I agree. Since we're talking about research, I, I saw a question that was uh, done regarding research from an IMG. Um, she basically asked, like, what percentage of residents uh, do research and did you get your uh, your first try? So, uh, so I think it depends. So radiology is turning very competitive, especially during the past two years. Uh, and I would say that most of the people that apply have some experience in research. Now, if you look at IMGs at the charting outcomes, you are going to notice that the main difference between the unmatched and the matched IMGs is the number of, of published uh, articles, even more than the, the scores. Like if you have more than two, like 240s, uh, we used to use the, the SEP1, now it's probably going to change as well. The, the thing that better predicted which applicant was going to be selected was research. So think about it. Uh, every time that I get someone who wants to apply to radiology, I say like, hey, you know what? I would do one year of research, at least build a network and then try to apply. And then the other uh, question, did you get your first try? Uh, full disclosure, I applied twice. Uh, and uh, the match is very hard to predict. You never have like full awareness of what's happening. So uh, if you do not uh, if you do not match in the first try, don't get uh, don't don't get down because of that. Uh, the match is extremely tough. It, it is a horrendous process, and uh, sometimes good applicants do not get the opportunity that's the truth that's the sad truth so just you know keep grinding you're going to get it uh, i am the living proof of that i had a horrible year but you know i was able to turn it around so keep doing it i mean if you're applying to radiology it's because you love it so if it's your passion then things will will happen for you I agree. I've seen so many people um, not match on the first year and then match on a very good program the second or third year. It happens. I think it does not speak about you. It speaks about the conditions that you were in and the conditions, you don't control them either. You know, like the, the programs that are going to invite you, you have no control over that. You can control your, you know, how you react to the interview, but that's about it. You know, it's something that's away from your control, right? So just know that there are many people that apply in the first time and do not get it and do get it in the second time. Um, and if you want to talk about that, I'll be, you know, more than happy to talk about it. Um, and yeah, just keep grinding, keep doing it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I think our session is almost finished. Just want to thank you all for sharing your experiences and the tips with us. And uh, best of luck with all of you guys, and especially applicants that are applying uh, very soon next week. Good luck, thank you guys. Thank for joining. Good luck. I'm going to put my email in the chat so if anyone sure, uh, has sure. any yeah. questions. Yeah. I'm going to do it as well. Uh, Thank you so much.
if you take a screenshot, it would be easier. Okay, guys. All right. See you. It, it was a pleasure talking Good to you. Uh, it Thank was a you pleasure meeting the rest of the panelists. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank bye. you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good luck.